Got another set of questions for the bonding and structure topic. So, as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So, dot and cross diagram for the bonding in the nitrogen molecule. So, nitrogen's in group five, so we'll need five of each type of electron. So, I've used shaded circles and crosses. It's a triple bond between the nitrogen atoms, so we need three electrons of each type in that shared part which leaves a lone pair for each nitrogen. Moving on to the next question about the halogens. So both solid chlorine and solid bromine have got simple covalent or simple molecular lattice structures. Moving on to part B about how induced dipole-dipole forces arise between halogen molecules. So we need to say something like this. Electron density is uneven at any instant. So that creates an instantaneous dipole in the molecule which in turn induces a dipole in a neighboring molecule. So the delta plus of one molecule attracts the delta minus of a neighboring molecule. Now I think it's always a good idea to have a, a diagram up your sleeve if you wanted to sort of sketch something out. You may be more likely to remember this and then you can put it into words. So here's the original molecule, the first molecule we talked about. There's that uneven electron distribution and therefore you've got this dipole, this instantaneous dipole across the molecule like that. So if we bring in the neighboring molecule now, the electron density in this molecule is gonna repel the electron density in the neighboring molecule. So this is your induced dipole, so it's been forced onto this molecule by the first one, and you can see you've now got delta minus next to a delta plus. So there's that induced dipole-dipole interaction. And for the last part of this question, so why has bromine got a higher boiling point than chlorine? It's got nothing to do with covalent bond strength. So we need to get that out of our head straight away. It's all down to the number of electrons in the molecule. So bromine has got more electrons than chlorine. So that means bromine's got stronger induced dipole-dipole forces. And therefore, there's more energy needed to break them. Moving on to the next question about the difference in the melting points of sodium and magnesium. So I've drawn a couple of metallic bonding diagrams to help explain this one. So you can see in the uh, magnesium, we've got a greater charge, 2 plus, versus 1 plus for sodium. Obviously, you're going to have more delocalized electrons. So more energy is going to be needed to break the stronger attraction between the Mg2 plus ions and those delocalized electrons. And that's the attraction, obviously, that's got to be broken to melt any metal. Moving on to the last question now. So you'll notice I've added some electrons here. So I've got a cross there to represent the electron, the fluorines putting into this single covalent bond of the oxygen. Obviously oxygen matches that with that um, black circle, likewise for this bond here. So the reason I've done that is you can now clearly see we've got one, two, three, four electron regions around that central oxygen. So the shape They've drawn it looking linear. It's not linear. It's actually based on a tetrahedral structure. But if we only count the bonds, we've got a non-linear shape. So in terms of the bond angle, we've got four electron regions. So our starting angle would be 109.5 degrees. But we've got to take two and a half degrees off for each of those lone pairs. So because of that, the angle is 104.5 degrees. The final, final question, so what's the dot and cross diagram for calcium phosphide going to look like? Well, we need to know what type of bonding it's got. Haven't told us, so we've got to use the fact that we've got metal and non-metal, so it's going to be ionic. So we need three Ca2 plus ions. I always go for crosses for my metal, and I put a full outer shell of eight electrons there. You could have that blank if you wanted to. Moving on to the two phosphide ions that we need. So phosphorus is in group five, so I need five different shaped electrons, so black circles, because I've used the crosses for the metal. There's the three electrons from the calcium, three minus charge.